Hello friends and fellow bibliophiles, welcome back to Cat's Novel Adventures. In today's video, I am sharing all of the movies and TV shows that I am planning on watching throughout the month of April. Yes, I am having a major watch-a-thon for the epic nostalgia-thon Old School April. And I have a couple of wrecks for you as well. <laughs> so excited about old school April. April 1st is literally days away and that is no joke. We are going to have so much fun. Ugh, I cannot wait. Check out my new old school April t-shirt. I just love this color blue and I'm wearing my The Shining earrings in celebration of what I'll be watching in April. Nothing speaks old school more than Stephen King or The Shining. First of all, I want to thank Kelsey for creating the cutest printable with the prompts for the Watchathon. She made it look like a page out of the TV guide. All the prompt numbers are representing like channel numbers. It's so clever. I really love it. And that is what I used to choose my movies for Old School April. Also, I just want to mention that I will be spending the bulk of Old School April participating in the Watchathon and the Activity Thon portions of this Nostalgia Thon. The reason I'm doing that is because I have been hitting the books pretty hard since January and I kind of want a break. It doesn't mean that I won't read anything. It's just that I have no idea what I'm gonna be reading at this point. I have maybe one or two ideas. I know I'm gonna read some Goosebumps. I know I'm going to read a Nancy Drew, but that's about it um, in this point in time. So I'm very, very excited to spend time doing something I love just as much as reading, and that is watching movies and TV shows. Just a reminder, when you do these prompts, you are earning points for your team and you can do these prompts multiple times. For example, if I watch five episodes of The Waltons, I will earn five points for my team. In addition, the movies that I will be watching for Old School April will count for a minimum of two points each. Now that's not to say that there aren't some movies that will count for way more than that, but just letting you know that if you watch any of the movies that I'm watching, you will get at least two points for your movies. So it really is a great idea if you can find some movies that will count for multiple prompts. Multiple prompts mean more points for your team. Let's go ahead and get started. On channel one, watch any nostalgic show released before 2005. I decided this year for Old School April to choose TV shows from each decade that I have been on this planet. I was born in 1969 and I feel like I'm pretty old school. So from the 60s, I will be watching Bewitched. I can't wait to revisit Samantha, Darren, and Little Tabitha. And from the 70s, I've chosen Laverne and Shirley. Laverne and Shirley have a fun friendship. They work in a factory. They hang out. They do all kinds of crazy things. This TV show and this friendship reminds me of my friendship with my friend Shelly, who passed away in November. So it's going to be like comfort watching for me. In the 80s, I watched Murder, She Wrote, and I can't wait to revisit Jessica Fletcher in Cabot Cove and go along with her solving all these mysteries. From the 90s, I have three shows that I'll be watching. The first one is Forever Night. It is about a detective, Nick Knight, who is a vampire. He is trying not to succumb to his vampiric nature and to do good in his community. Also, I'll be watching The X-Files, which is one of my favorite shows in the entire world, next to probably The Walking Dead. But I really love The X-Files. I enjoy going on the cases with Dana Scully and Fox Mulder. I want to believe. 
And then also I'll be watching some Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I want to help Buffy Summers out as she is protecting Sunnydale along with the Scooby gang from what's coming out of the Hellmouth. And then last but not least, I will be watching some SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, I do like SpongeBob. Now, SpongeBob originally came out in 1999, but I'm counting it for the 2000s because guess what? It's still going strong today. I have a few TV recs for you from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s that I think you'll enjoy. I absolutely love all of these shows. I enjoyed watching them so much back in the day. From the 60s, you might want to check out Gilligan's Island, The Flintstones, The Addams Family, The Twilight Zone, or I Dream of Jeannie. From the 70s, you might want to check out Sanford and Son, Columbo, The Muppet Show, Scooby-Doo, or The Bionic Woman. And from the 80s, let's not forget the gorgeous Tom Selleck from Magnum P.I., Miami Vice, The Smurfs, Full House, or Bosom Buddies. And from the 90s, you might want to check out Melrose Place, Dawson's Creek, Ally McBeal, Rugrats, or Seinfeld, the show about nothing. On Channel 2, watch any movie released before 2005. I have chosen four movies for this prompt, one each from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and I will give a little information about the movies that I will be watching, not only for this prompt, but for all of the prompts in the TV Guide. From 1969, the year of my birth, I will be watching The House That Screamed. It is a horror mystery film. It is also considered a slasher. It is about a strict headmistress who runs a secluded school for wayward girls in 19th century France, and these girls are disappearing under mysterious circumstances. Here are some recommendations for you for movies from the 1960s. These recommendations, as well as all the recommendations I'm going to talk about throughout this video, I will not be giving any details about them. Otherwise, we'll be here all day long. And I want to mention that I have watched all of these films and I love them. And I have chosen a variety of genres for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out movies from the 1960s that you might enjoy. How about To Kill a Mockingbird, The Sound of Music, Psycho, The Pink Panther, The Ghost of Mr. Chicken, the Graduate, My Fair Lady, Night of the Living Dead, To Sir with Love, True Grit, Planet of the Apes, Mary Poppins, Yours, Mine, and Ours, and Father Goose. I just recently watched Mary Poppins for the Cozy Cottage Book Club, and my mom and I watched Father Goose when she was in the hospital with her broken hip. Both of those films are wonderful. I really enjoyed them very much. And if you're a fan of Julie Andrews or Cary Grant, I'd recommend those two films to watch. From 1970, I've chosen The Aristocats, one of my favorite Disney films. It's a family-friendly comedy. It's animated. It also has a little bit of romance sprinkled in it. And it is about a smooth-talking tomcat who, with his help, a family of Parisian felines sent to inherit a fortune from their owner, try to make it back home after a jealous butler kidnaps them and leaves them in the country. Here are your movie racks from the 1970s. Alien, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, Saturday Night Fever, The Bad News Bears, Smokey and the Bandit, Young Frankenstein, The Muppet Movie, Carrie, Rocky, Halloween, Don't Look Now, Star Wars, Grease, Monty Python, and the Holy Grail. Many of these films can count for multiple prompts, and there's even a Tim Curry film in there, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I just recently saw Grease on the stage. What a wonderful musical. Whether you see it on the stage or you watch it on TV, you're not going to be disappointed. 
I'll be watching Pretty in Pink from 1986. This also happens to be one of my host wrecks. It is a romantic comedy. The story is about a rich guy and a poor girl from opposite sides of society who fall in love, causing disappointments among their old friends. Pretty in Pink was directed by John Hughes. He is a fantastic director. He has wonderful films out there. If you want to check out more of his teen films, I'd recommend watching one of my favorites, The Breakfast Club, 16 Candles, Weird Science, or Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You can't go wrong with any of those films. It's so much fun to revisit some teen angst. More movie recommendations from the 80s include Valley Girl, The Burbs, Fast Time at Ridgemont High, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Risky Business, Purple Rain, Say Anything, Prom Night, Ghostbusters, The Outsiders, Dead Calm, Christine, The Little Mermaid, and Creepshow. I think the 80s was a fantastic time in film, and last year I watched The Burbs for Old School April, and I really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend checking it out because it also happens to be one of the host wrecks. From 1990, I've chosen Goodfellas. This happens to also be one of Kelsey's host wrecks, and it is a crime drama, and it is the story of Henry Hill and his life in the Mafia, covering his relationship with his wife, Karen, and his mob partners, Jimmy Conway and Tommy DeVito. Recommendations for the 90s include The Frighteners, Pretty Woman, Pulp Fiction, The Blair Witch Project, Forrest Gump, Death Becomes Her, Sister Act, The Crow, City of Angels, The Wedding Singer, Toy Story, Edward Scissorhands, Misery, and Seven. Last year, I watched The Frighteners because it happens to have one of my crushes in it, and that's Michael J. Fox. I think it's an underrated film, and I would highly recommend that one. On Channel 3, watch a host recommendation. The two films that I chose to recommend are An American Werewolf in London and Pretty in Pink. Both of them are comedies. One is horror, and the other is romance. I would highly recommend checking out the rest of the host recommendations. They are fantastic. There is a variety of genres and you are guaranteed to earn at least two points because all of the films were released prior to 2005. And if I have any time left in my month to watch more movies, I am going to choose from the host recommendations list. On channel four, watch an animated movie. I've chosen The Great Mass Detective from 1986. This happens to be one of Coral's host recommendations. It's a wonderful family film with a mystery, and it is about Basil, the rodent Sherlock Holmes who investigates the kidnapping of a toy maker and uncovers its link to his arch enemy, Professor Radigan. My recommendations for animated movies include The Lion King, Charlotte's Web, The Fox and the Hound, Frankenweenie, Rockadoodle, Shrek, and Ice Age. You can never go wrong with an animated film. I absolutely adore them. An animated film is equivalent to a picture book to me. I just think it keeps you young at heart. On Channel 5, watch a movie set in the mall. Now, I may regret this, but I've chosen Chopping Mall from 1986. It is listed as a horror sci-fi movie. However, it has chopping in it, so I'm assuming it might count as a slasher. We shall see. I have never watched it before, so this will be an adventure of sorts. It is about a group of young shopping mall employees who stay behind for a late night party in one of the stores. When the mall goes on lockdown before they can get out, the robot security system malfunctions and goes on a killing spree. Bum, bum, bum. My recommendations for movies that take place in a shopping mall include Night of the Comet, Weird Science, Valley Girl, Dawn of the Dead, both 1978 and 2004. With the exception of the Dawn of the Dead movies, which take place pretty much the whole time in the mall or surrounding the mall, 
The other three films have some great scenes that take place in the mall, so that's why I went ahead and counted them. On Channel 6, watch an adaptation or remake of an old school book, movie, or show, and I've chosen the 2018 film, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Very excited to watch this because it is based on Shirley Jackson's 1962 novel, which I just read for Week of Weird. This is considered horror, mystery, thriller, and it is about Mary Cat and her sister Constance and their uncle Julian who live in isolation after experiencing a family tragedy six years earlier. When cousin Charles arrives to steal the family fortune, he also threatens a dark secret they have been hiding. My recommendations for prompt number six include It, The Jungle Book, Pinocchio, Stardust, and the perks of being a wallflower. And I will recommend that if you choose it, pick the Tim Curry version because then you'll also satisfy watching a film with Tim Curry in it. On Channel 7, watch a newer movie or show that is set in the 70s, 80s, 90s, or early 2000s, and I've chosen the 2019 film Joker. It is a crime thriller type film, and it takes place in the 80s. It is about a failed stand-up comedian who is driven insane and turns to a life of crime and chaos in Gotham City while becoming an infamous psychopathic crime figure. Here are my recommendations for prompt number seven. I will also include the time period they are set in, starting with The Watchmen, set in 1985, Fear Street Part 1, 1994, Fear Street Part 2, 1978, The Final Girls, set in the 80s, Summer of 84, 1984, The House of the Devil, set in the 80s, and American Hustle, set in 1978. I will also mention there are two TV shows that could fall in this category. One is Stranger Things, which takes place in the 80s, and you could get away with The Fall of the House of Usher because it has a timeline the episodes run through, starting, I believe, in 1953. So you'll hit your 70s, 80s, and 90s and early 2000s throughout the episodes. So I would highly recommend all of these movies. They are fantastic. On Channel 8, watch a movie or show starring a nostalgic crush of yours. Well, I will be watching four movies on this channel because I have four crushes. Sadly, I forgot one of them last year, but I did not make that mistake again this year. So my first crush is Rob Lowe, and I will be watching St. Elmo's Fire from 1985. It is a romance slash drama, and it is about... Seven friends, Alec, Billy, Jules, Kevin, Kirby, Leslie, and Wendy, who are trying to navigate through life and their friendships following college graduation. Oh, I love me some Rob Lowe. My next crush is Keanu Reeves, and I will be watching his 1986 film, Brotherhood of Justice. It is a crime drama action type film and it is about three high school students who start a vigilante group to combat crime in their neighborhood. Whew, Keanu Reeves, he makes me swoon. Crush number three is Michael J. Fox and I will be watching his 1983 film, High School USA. It is a teen comedy. It is set in a senior high school class where JJ pursues the girlfriend of a rival from a higher clique. Mm -mm -mm. He is a cutie patootie. He's kind of like that boy next door type. And my final crush is Robert Downey Jr. He is the one I forgot last year, but I'm so glad that I did not for this year because I will be watching his 1988 film, Johnny Be Good. This is a comedy sport type film and it is about Johnny. He is the top high school football player and many colleges want him. His girlfriend, coach, and best friend want him in the college serving themselves most. Whew, I love me some Robert Downey Jr. also. I mean, he eventually becomes Iron Man. 
As for recommendations for this prom, you'll have to let me know who your crush is and then I'll give you my old school April recommendations. On Channel 9, watch a movie set at summer camp. And I fear I've chosen another one that I'm going to regret, but I'm going with the horror film from 1981 called The Burning. It is also considered a slasher, and it is about a former summer camp caretaker who is horribly burned from a prank gone wrong. He lurks around an upstate New York summer camp, bent on killing the teenagers responsible for his disfigurement. My summer camp recommendations for you are Friday the 13th, Fear Street Part 2, which takes place in 1978, Sleepaway Camp, Meatballs, Little Darlings from 1980, and The Final Girls, which is set in the 80s. I'm so sad that we are not having a Friday the 13th in April because I would so watch Friday the 13th in April again for probably the a millionth time. However, we do have two Friday the 13th in 2024 and one of them is in September and the other is in December. So I'll revisit Friday the 13th one of those months. On Channel 10, watch a Jim Carrey movie. And for this one, I am watching Once Bitten from 1985. It's a comedy horror film, and Jim Carrey plays the role of Mark Kendall. It is about a vampire countess who needs to drink the blood of a virgin in order to keep her eternal beauty. It seems that all is hopeless until she bumps into Mark Kendall. My recommendations for Jim Carrey movies include Ace Ventura, The Mask, Batman Forever, where he plays the Riddler, The Cable Guy, and Bruce Almighty. You can't go wrong with watching a Jim Carrey film. On Channel 11, watch a Tim Curry movie, and I have chosen The Plowman's Lunch from 1983. It is a drama, and Tim Curry plays the part of Jeremy Hancock. It is about James Penfield, who has made a career out of journalism. Now bankrupt, he finds himself with a group of other writers in the middle of the dispute-ridden British homeland at the time of the Falklands War. My recs for Tim Curry movies include the Rocky Horror Picture Show, It from 1990, the animated Fern Gully, Home Alone 2, and Clue the Movie. I love these films, especially the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I have seen it a gajillion times. You can't go wrong with Tim Curry. On Channel 12, watch a movie directed by a British director. And for this prompt, I am not adding a new movie. I'm actually going to use movies that I'm watching for other prompts. And they include The Plowman's Lunch, which is directed by Sir Richard Eyre. The Burning, which is directed by Tony Malem, and The Changeling, which is directed by Peter Medak, and I'll explain that movie when I get to that prompt. My recommendations for movies directed by British directors include A Fish Called Wanda, directed by Charles Crichton, Educating Rita, directed by Lewis Gilbert, Thelma and Louise, directed by Ridley Scott, The Hunger, directed by Tony Scott, 28 Days Later, directed by Danny Boyle. And I would recommend possibly checking out Ridley Scott because he directed Legend, which is one of the host wrecks, and The Hunger happens to be a vampire film. And yes, Tony Scott and Ridley Scott are brothers. On Channel 13, watch a movie featuring sports or a physical activity, and I am watching the 2004 film Dodgeball, which is a comedy sport movie, and it's of course about the sport of dodgeball. It is about a group of misfits who enter a Las Vegas dodgeball tournament in order to save their cherished local gym from the onslaught of a corporate health fitness chain. Here are my recommendations about movies with sports or another physical activity. I'll also include what sport or activity is in the movie. Starting with Flash Dance, which is about dance. Radio is about football. A League of Their Own is baseball. Airbud, basketball. 
Kingpin is about bowling, ice castles, ice skating, and Caddyshack is about golf. You can't go wrong with these films, especially the funny ones like Caddyshack, which is hilarious, and Kingpin, also very humorous. And you might want to check out Air Bud. There's a dog in there who plays basketball. On Channel 14, watch a movie featuring an animal or animals, and I have chosen to watch An American Werewolf in London from 1981. This is my host recommendation. It's also about a werewolf, that's my animal. It's comedy horror, and it is about two American college students who are on a walking tour of Britain, and they are attacked by a werewolf that none of the locals will admit exists. Here are my animal wrecks for you, and I've included one for each of the teams, and they are Jaws, The Birds, Anaconda, Dr. Doolittle from 1998 starring Eddie Murphy, Babe, Milo and Otis, and Arachnophobia. So if you are on one of the teams, Silver Snakes, make sure you check out Anaconda. Now you purple parrots, you've got the birds, and my blue barracudas have jaws. On chapter 15, watch a movie featuring vampires. And I've chosen the 1998 film, John Carpenter's Vampires. This is a horror action thriller film, also considered a Western. And it is about Recovering from an ambush that killed his entire team, a vengeful vampire slayer must retrieve an ancient Catholic relic that, should it be acquired by vampires, will allow them to walk in the sunlight. Some of my favorite movies are vampire movies, so I'm excited to recommend a few of my favorites, which include The Lost Boys, Dracula from 1992 starring Gary Oldman, Fright Night from 1985, 30 Days of Night, From Dusk Till Dawn, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Van Helsing. These are excellent films. I would highly recommend you checking them out. On Channel 16, watch a movie with a mystery element. And I've chosen the 1980 film, The Changeling, which happens to be horror with a mystery element. And it is about after the death of his wife and daughter in a car crash, a music professor staying at a long vacant Seattle mansion is dragged into a decades old mystery by an inexplicable presence in the mansion's attic. My movie wrecks that have a mysterious element include Seven, The Sixth Sense from 1999 with Bruce Willis, Don't Look Now, What Lies Beneath, The Ninth Gate, The Private Eyes, and National Treasure. And if you like a family-friendly movie, I would highly recommend The Private Eyes. It's a lot of fun. And one of my favorites off of this list is Seven. I've watched it many, many times, but it never gets old. And on the last channel, Channel 17, watch a slasher movie or a movie that could give you nightmares. And I have chosen the 1991 film Popcorn. It is a slasher film. I guess it could also give you nightmares. It stars the fantastic Dee Wallace. And it is about a master of disguise, deranged killer, who begins killing off the college students who are organizing a horror movie marathon in an abandoned theater. And it is considered horror comedy. My recs for slashers or movies that give you nightmares include Children of the Corn, April Fool's Day, Urban Legend, Nightmare on Elm Street, Hellraiser, The Exorcist, and Phantasm. And why not watch April Fool's Day on April 1st? How perfect is that? Those are all of the movies and TV shows that I am planning on watching for Old School April. I will keep a list on Letterboxd. So if you want to follow me on Letterboxd, just check out the link below in the description box. I will be adding to my movie list because I will be attending watch parties on the Old School April Discord. Also, I want to thank Kelsey for creating and hosting Old School April. She's over at Slime and Slasher. She is wonderful. And thank you for creating all these printables for us to be able to create our own watchathons and readathons and activity thons 
for this epic nostalgia-thon. And I also want to mention all of the hosts for Old School April so that you can subscribe to their channels and check out their recommendations for not only their watch-a-thons, but also for their read-a-thons. And they include Kelsey at Slime and Slashers, Elizabeth at Elizabeth Sagewood, Katrina at Katrina Brown, Andrew at It Came From The Page, Alex at The Bookiebus, Coral at Pretty and Paper Cuts, Venus at Venus Escapes to Read, Amy at Amy Noel Reads, me at Cat's Novel Adventures, Kelly at Hooked on Books, April on Instagram at Apple and Alchemy, Christine at Secrets Read, and Cameron at Library Macabre. Again, I highly recommend that you check out all of these host channels. They have wonderful content and they have a lot on their channels about old school April. Thanks everyone for stopping by. I really appreciate you watching. I had so much fun putting my list together for the old school April Watchathon, and I couldn't wait to share it with you. I also hope that you are planning on joining us for Old School April because we are going to have a lot of fun. And if you have not decided on a team, I highly recommend the Silver Snakes. We are the sweetest and the sassiest of the bunch. And before I leave, I would love to share my haiku that I wrote last year in celebration of our three teams. Because you know, next year there will be no Purple Parrots, Blue Barracudas, and Silver Snakes. Here it is. Purple parrots peck, blue barracudas bite back, silver snakes sling sass. Until our paths cross again, stay amazing and be adventurous and join the silver snakes.